Come, baby. Enjoy this great game. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball channel. This is Eric, and today it's time to recap the trade deadline that went down yesterday. We'll talk about five winners. We'll talk about five losers. We'll talk about some of the big moves that went down yesterday. We'll talk about the Giants, who uh, they were really busy on the trade deadline. I got some footage. I got a clip from an executive in the front office and uh, making some moves yesterday. Here's a clip of what was going down in the Giants' front office yesterday. Oh my. So there you have it. The Giants actually were not busy at all. They didn't make any moves. Only later we found out a very minor move that the Giants made, and that was sending some cash over to the Rays for lefty Anthony Banda, who has had quite a frustrating career since he was a pretty high prospect. Came up with the Diamondbacks, didn't pitch great, did a little better with Tampa Bay until he had to have Tommy John surgery. And since then he has not pitched a whole lot, but the guy has good stuff, at least he has in the past. So we'll see how that works out. The Giants put Joey Rickard on the 60 day IL. So he will be out for the rest of the season. We didn't see much of him, but uh, that's it for Joey. So it's now Banda time in San Francisco. We'll see how he does. But if you saw the thumbnail, you saw that the Reds are still going for it. And I really do appreciate that because I picked them to win it all. And it is not looking good this year so far. Not looking terrible. The Reds are still in it. And they proved that at the trade deadline. They said, we're gonna be buyers. We're not giving up. We think that we're gonna have a better second half. And I think they will as well. I don't think they're gonna be able to win that division at this point, but playoffs, no problem. And they traded for both Brian Goodwin, an outfielder, as well as Archie Bradley. In order to get Bradley, they had to send Joss Van Meter and prospect Stuart Fairchild to the Diamondbacks. And for Goodwin, they sent a pitcher by the name of Packy Naughton. So there you have it, Packy Naughton. And Archie Bradley, 28 years old, has given up a few runs this year, but it's not a huge sample size. He's converted six of his seven save opportunities. The Reds still have Rysel Iglesias, and he may remain the closer, but either way, you got Archie Bradley there who could take over the role at some point, or he could be a solid piece out of the bullpen, a very solid piece. So this is definitely good for the Reds, a Reds team that went all out in the offseason. I thought that this team did everything they needed to do, and uh, it turned out not really. They have not had a great first half. The offense has struggled. They have the lowest batting average in baseball last I checked, so the Reds needed to make some moves. Brian Goodwin is not exactly going to turn them into an offensive juggernaut at all, but you know, he's all right. Gonna have some depth there. The guy's got some speed, some good defense, and hey, he can hit the ball a little bit, a little bit of pop, but like I said, uh, it's not gonna be, you know, a huge change, but at least they did something to help. And they also, of course, bring over Archie Bradley. I figure that that's the big move. Archie Bradley, I mean, a serious arm. He was the closer over there in Arizona. So this is gonna be nice for the Reds bullpen. And I got the Reds as one of my five winners. Another winner is going to be the Padres. Grabbed Mitch Moreland from the Red Sox to help at DH. They got bullpen help with Austin Adams. Trevor Rosenthal from the Royals, a huge move. Taylor Williams, and also the big move. They grab Mike Clevenger from the Indians in a massive nine-player deal. And Mike Clevenger, a guy who amazingly hasn't made an all-star team yet, yet his ERA in his career is 3.2. He's always around three. This year, he's 3.18 in four starts, 22 and two-thirds innings. He's only given up eight runs. He struck out 21. He is solid. This is huge. And you throw him in there with Chris Paddock, Denilson Lamette, Zach Davies, Garrett Richards. Look out for the Padres. The next winner is going to be the Toronto Blue Jays. And we had Ball Cap Sports on the show yesterday. And he was not overly excited, but he was like, okay, you know, this was good. This was nice for the Blue Jays. But I thought that it was actually really nice for the Blue Jays, even though, yeah, not as splashy of moves as the Padres. But... When you add Taiwan Walker and Robbie Ray to that rotation, Robbie Ray, yeah, people are down on him right now. He's been walking everybody, but the guy is filthy, and it just takes a little tweak here, a little tweak there, something to turn it around, maybe even a change of scenery. Anything can turn it around. This guy can go out there and just shut a team down. If he's got his stuff, if he's locating, he can shut a team down. This dude will strike out well over a batter and inning, and I think it is huge for that rotation just to have that threat in there. You also pick up Ross Stripling in a deal with the Dodgers. 
He has been very consistent throughout his career. 2018 All-Stars, ERA is usually in the threes. Yes, this year he's at 5.6 and seven starts. It's just seven starts. He's given up a ton of home runs this year with 12 and 33 innings. 12 bombs and 33 innings is a lot. But you got to assume that's not going to stay like that. That's just a, He's just off to a rough start. Ross Stripling has got his stuff. He's solid. And you pick him up as well. You've got three pitchers that the Blue Jays picked up that could jump into that rotation. You know, alongside Ryu. And then you got those other names that they already have. Like Tanner Roark and Chase Anderson. They can definitely use all these names. Figure out a solid rotation to have somebody to go out there on a nightly basis and start a game and give the Blue Jays a chance to win. So I love those moves for the Blue Jays. Not to mention they pick up Jonathan VR from the Marlins, who is very versatile. He will be in that lineup. You got Bo Bichette injured right now, so it's perfect right there. My fourth winner is going to be the Boston Red Sox. I'm not going to go through all the prospects that they got because I don't know a whole lot about them, but I can just tell you that they have drastically improved their farm system they have drastically improved their future in a season that they clearly are not going anywhere and the red sox traded away all the main guys that they could who were going to become free agents at the end of the year they could have traded away more but i think they did more than enough not to completely piss off their fan base to show their fan base hey we are obviously not going to win it this year we're getting pieces for the future we're trading away guys that are going to be gone anyway and they still keep you know xander bogards they keep some of their fan favorites and things like that so the Red Sox, I thought, did pretty well. You know, you trade away Mitch Moreland, Kevin Pillar, Brandon Workman, Heath Embry. All those guys are gone. You get a guy like Connor Seabold in your system, a fantastic pitcher. I'm going to give the Red Sox a nod as one of my five winners. And my final winner is going to be a team that came out of nowhere this year to actually play pretty well, despite falling down with COVID for a while, despite having to get rid of half their roster for a, a period of time while they recover. We're talking about the Miami Marlins. They realized that they have a chance, so they actually were buyers. But they also realized that they're the Marlins, and they still got to continue to think about their future. So they were also sellers. They were able to toe that line pretty nicely and added outfielder Starling Marte from the Diamondbacks, but also sent Jonathan VR to the Blue Jays. So they stay in the playoff race. They stay focused on this season, but also on the future. You pick up Marte, who's hitting, he's, real, he's having a fantastic season, hitting 311. He is looking great. He is under contract through next season as well. And then when you trade VR, you pick up Griffin Conine, Second round draft pick last season, 22 home runs in single A. This guy, it looks like he's going to be very solid, you know, and, and he's also the son, I believe, of Jeff Conine, former Marlin, a famous Marlin. So that is pretty awesome. Now, I don't know how he feels about that. Maybe he's like, man, this boy, I don't want to be a Marlin like my dad. I want to be somewhere else, man. I want to do my own thing. Sorry, bro. You're a Marlin, baby. Conine, Marlin. That's where we're at there. So nice job, Marlins. That's my fifth winner. Those are my five winners. Going to quickly go through five losers. I'm not going to get on these teams too much. I know that they all did the best they could, but there are still going to be the teams that are like, what happened there? You know, didn't do great. And these are my five losers. Tough to call this team losers because they did trade Trevor Rosenthal. They got some nice prospects for him, including Edward Olivares, but that is it. They didn't do a whole lot else. They kept Whit Merrifield, and I understand he's a royal. He's a career royal, and you, you maybe want him to play as long as you can in that uniform. But at the same time, look at you guys' situation. He also had Greg Holland. They had a second reliever who also was pitching great, and I thought for sure they could get something for Holland. They, they hung on to him. They hung on to Duffy. They hung on to Keller. They hang on to Junis. So after the Rosenthal movie, you thought, man, the Royals are going to be pushing everyone here at the deadline. They're going to really bolster that system. Next up, you might have noticed their logo on the thumbnail, the Milwaukee Brewers. They are in a spot to compete for a playoff spot and expanded playoff season. And I have said it about the Giants. I understand you're not one of the best teams in baseball right now on paper, but you have a chance with expanded playoffs, shortened season. Why not go for it? It's baseball. They sent a solid relief pitcher, David Phelps, to the Phillies, the team that they're basically competing for, with for a wild card spot, and they didn't get anybody to help offensively. Uh, the team that's really struggling, one of their best players Christian, is Christian Yelich this year. And he's struggling. He's having a terrible season, and he's like their best hitter. Even manager Craig Council said, basically, we're just counting on our guys to step it up. Well, they might. They might have a better second half. I'm sure they will. 
but you you couldn't get any help you couldn't get anything i mean i i gotta think that brewers fans are frustrated like really you guys are right there in a wild card hunt because of the expanded playoffs and you're not going to go for it at all you're a team that's been on the playoffs multiple years in a row i believe three years straight they've been in at least the wild card game they were in the wild card game last season you got every opportunity to go for it again and i i thought the brewers were gonna make some moves here and improve instead they sold. They didn't even buy. They sold. Next loser is going to be the New York Yankees. I'm not saying they're not good. They have every chance in the world to make a deep playoff push. Maybe a World Series championship. Anything can happen. It is the Yankees. But the injury bug is just eating them alive every season. And yes, it seems like whoever steps in, next man up, always does well. And maybe they're going to continue to count on that. But when you see your rivals like the Blue Jays making all kind of moves saying we're all in baby we're going for it yeah add Walker Ray and Stripling like I talked about the Yankees didn't do anything the Yankees really needed help in that rotation they didn't make any moves so I thought that the Yankees really they didn't do their, themselves any favors by not making any moves at the deadline and I got them as my third loser Number four, and this is a tough one because they did make some moves, the Texas Rangers. They made some moves. They sent Robinson, uh, Robinson Chirinos packing. They sent Todd Frazier to the Mets. But you hung on to your most valuable players who are going to be free agents fairly soon at the end of next season, I believe, for Lance Lynn, who was all over the trade rumors. And they also hang on to Joey Gallo, another guy that they could have really got some solid prospects. I got to believe teams were offering major prospects for these guys and the rangers decided to hang on to them i thought that that was a loss right there the rangers really need they really could use some solid prospects some you know prospects that might be very close to big big league ready you can figure out some kind of package i felt that they really needed to move lance lynn i would have to believe more than one team were saying we need lynn we need lynn what do you want we will give it to you and uh, the rangers were like no nah, we're good we're gonna hang on to him and my last loser is gonna be another team that stood pat like the giants but the difference is you know the giants are a team that they're the giants they're a team that's not gonna sell away all their prospects there are some other teams that probably could have done well to get rid of a few prospects and really go for it and these are teams that are their world series ready and uh, the team that i got in mind is the atlanta braves this is a team that every year everyone's talking about dude braves 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 well this year they're right there they're in first place they got every opportunity to go for it they're going to start the playoffs at home assuming that they finish where they're at the Braves have every opportunity to take it home this year. Mike Soroka, Cole Hamels are hurt. Other guys have not performed well. Sean Newcomb, Kyle Wright, both got demoted. The Braves barely did anything. They added Tommy Malone, a left-handed pitcher. Okay, nice. That's not bad. But they really didn't do a whole lot. And I know that they were trying to get Lance Lynn from the Rangers. But guess what? You didn't get him. You didn't offer enough. Now, maybe the Rangers were like, oh, you want uh, Lance Lynn. Okay, uh, we need uh, Drew Waters and uh, Christian Pache and uh, Ian Anderson and uh, Bryce Wilson. And it's a deal. <laughs> and Braves were like, F, F off. So I don't know what, you know, the Rangers were asking for. But I'm just saying the Braves, if it wasn't Lance Lynn, they should have got somebody in that rotation to help out. They should have got somebody to help them in the playoffs. And they didn't do anything. So, you know, Atlanta Braves, I'm sorry. Let me know how you feel if you're a Braves fan. I got them as one of my five losers. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And uh, let's talk about this. That's where I'm at. So what a great trade deadline. I hope that you were able to jump into the stream. If not, the stream is still on the channel, but it's like three hours long. So I wanted to make a condensed version. i let you guys know how I felt about this year's trade deadline. San Diego Padres, oh my God, they're going for it. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button. And I'm going to talk to you guys next time. See ya! When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye, baby. History's in the making at Oracle Park.